So we continue with our teaching series of uh, Journeying with Jesus to the Cross. And today the title of uh, our uh, teaching is Jesus of the Lost. Some years ago when uh, my family were much smaller, uh, we were visiting a huge market. It was uh, filled with people and stalls and shops uh, and we were wandering around. It was a sort of a sensory explosion. Uh, and there was suddenly a moment I looked around and I realized that there was one child missing. And there was that horror as a parent. If you're a parent or a grandparent, you've been there and you've suddenly lost one of your children. And thankfully, we resolved the situation quite quickly. I darted back to uh, where we had uh, come, one of the, I think it was a fish stall where we'd been looking at all these amazing uh, fish. And there was this small child, uh, about this high, looking around, uh, and we swept her up and uh, picked her up and brought her back. And when we suddenly realized, and when I suddenly realized that uh, one was missing, I didn't hesitate to leave the rest of the family that wall together and disappear into the crowd and go looking for the one that was lost. Now, in that moment, there were a thousand things that went through my mind, the worst and the dangers of what could have happened. Now, I, up until quite recently, just thought that actually it was such a small uh, moment that uh, for, for the child that was lost, that they hadn't really grasped the full risk of what had happened. They hadn't really clearly uh, 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 come to that point. They realized that they were lost. I I warned them that I was going to share that story, and I discovered they perhaps realized they were more lost than I thought they really were. But, But there are times when we think we're lost, and we're not quite so aware. But there was that manic moment. I don't know if you've ever experienced like that. Or perhaps it wasn't a child, it was something precious where you've had those emotions of where you've lost something really important to you. We too, each and every one of us, have a heavenly dad that is looking for us. And he also really understands the dangers that are out there to his children if they're lost. And he's out there looking for us. He knows what the risk is if we're not with him. Our reading, Luke 15 today, has often been called the gospel within the gospel. We read two of three parables that Jesus uh, uh, shares about the lost and the found. The one we heard, the uh, the shepherd uh, who's lost his sheep, There's the woman who's lost a coin. And then the other half of chapter 15 is, of course, the well-known prodigal son story. The phrase gospel within a gospel is because these parables distill the good news of Jesus into a concentrate. These parables are the very essence of the good news of God. Jesus Christ The Son of God, the creator of the world, has been sent into the world to search for and find what has been lost. You and me and the rest of humanity. Whether we know we're lost or not, God is looking for us and he continues to look and search for us today. The shepherd and the woman represents our loving God searching for you and for me. So let's just have a a look at this parable a little bit more. Again, we find Jesus in the middle between the righteous and the sinners, the tax collectors and the sinners. What does it say? Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathered around to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with him. Jesus is found between the two. And, and, and once again, we sort of recognize that all people of all different elements get drawn to Jesus, but their reaction to Jesus is very different 
It's a bit like, sometimes you have that phrase, some people are a bit like Marmite. Some people like them, some people don't like them. And that's with Jesus. You can't sit on the f- fence. You either believe who he is, the Son of God, or you don't. But we read this man, Jesus, welcomes all. And that was the complaint of the Pharisees, the, 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 uh, 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 the, the righteous. Jesus welcomes sinners. Jesus hangs around the sinners. Jesus wants to be with the sinners. Jesus has come for the sinners. And those sinners are all of us because we all fall short of the glory of God. And I want to ask, will we be a community of faith who will welcome all people, as Jesus welcomed all, and so enable everybody who wants the chance to encounter Jesus, and as a result, stir in their hearts, come to know him. Many of you have been doing the Mission Shaped Living course with us on Tuesdays, And haven't we been talking about how Jesus dwells with the sinners and the lost so often around food? However, the Pharisees are unimpressed by this welcome and challenge him. And in response, Jesus tells these two stories. The shepherd, he has his hundred sheep, but one is lost So he leaves the 99, just as I left the rest of my family that were together and went looking for that one. And when the shepherd finds that one, he returns rejoicing. In the same way, the woman's got those 10 uh, coins and she loses one. So she sweeps the floor and cleans the house until she has found it and once again rejoices. Let's just reflect on these from two different perspectives. One from the one who is searching and then one aspect from if you are lost. The perspective from God, the shepherd, the woman. For most of us, this is a a clear picture of a loving heavenly God looking for his children, you and I who have rebelled and gone our own way, living separately from the ways of God. However, this has a radically different portrayal of God's nature for the listeners of the time, to the Jews. God dwelt in the temple, and that's where you would find God. And you were called to the temple for this sophisticated sacrificial system that they had in place. It's the image of all the people coming to God, crawling on our knees, begging for forgiveness. And there is a place for that. We do need to be on our knees before the God of the universe. But the image that comes out in these stories is really radically different to the listeners. The difference is of a loving God, like the shepherd, who's out searching for those that are lost. The shepherd walking the hills in all weathers looking for the lost sheep. Or the woman sweeping the house searching for what she has lost. There's a proactivity, there's an intentionality, there's a love in action by God. God is coming towards us. He's looking for us. He sent Jesus into the world to search for us. The movement is God to us, not so much us to God. And this is a really radical difference um, picture for the listeners. When I lost one of my children, as I said, I didn't stand still and hope that that child would come looking for me. I went to find her. In the same way, God is not sitting in heaven on a throne somewhere, hoping that we'll get right and find him and come and find him. He has sent Jesus to find us. He's actively looking. And of course, as we've been talking in our Mission Shaped Living course on Tuesday, we are part of God's search party. We are his agents and ambassadors here on earth, here in Bearwood and wherever you are every day, out there looking for people, sharing the good news 
of Jesus. God didn't sit on his throne and complain. He went, put a plan in place and went in search for us. He endured the cross. Jesus endured the cross, despising shame, laid down his life for his friends, and no greater love than this can be shown than dying on the cross for you and I. He had a plan, and he came looking for us. So that's the perspective from the person searching. What about from the perspective of those of us that are lost? Anyone been lost? Anybody been driving from A to B and got completely lost? I've seen one hand. Wonderful. Oh, there's a few more hands going up. I wonder. <laughs> Men or women? Damn <laughs> it. <laughs> I wonder what you felt when you were lost. Can you imagine that? Can you remember that panic or that sort of uncertainty that you felt? Can you remember? Now, sometimes we know that we're lost. I remember uh, when I used to be uh, in the Navy and navigating, particularly when a ship is coming into port, things happen very quickly and you're fixing the position of the ship every three minutes to make sure you're in the right place in the narrow channel. And I can still remember some of those times when I failed to get a decent fix of where the, sh the, the ship's position was. And there was this growing panic about were we in the middle of the right channel or were we moving towards the rocks or the shallow water. It, it suddenly uh, you know, builds up that panic when we suddenly get lost. Some of us will know we're lost. People around us will know that they are lost in old places and spaces, and that, that they're actually desperately looking to try and get back on track. Do you know people like that? Is that you? You know you're lost, but you're not quite sure where the right route is. Think about how you felt when you were lost and then found your way back. There's such relief and such joy Actually, getting back and then enables you to focus on the journey that you're meant to be on. I'm suddenly thinking when you're lost, your focus is on not getting lost. But once you know where you're on the, which track, you can focus on living. How many of us in the world are just surviving and just trying to cope with being lost? Whereas those of us who know and have discovered the Lord, have discovered a new level of freedom and joy and the ability to live fruitfully. And of course, there are those who don't know they're lost. There are many people out there who just think this is life and this is as good as it gets. Again, I remember launching from a ship from Portsmouth to fly to Portland Air Base when it was still there. And I had a very important person in the back of the, in the, in the aircraft, a VIP. And we were uh, flying to Portland, and then suddenly air traffic control called up and said, do you want help? You're about to go into the prohibited airspace. No, I'm not. You misidentified me. Uh, no, you're about to go into the danger. Would you literally turn left and then avoid the danger? I didn't know I was lost. I didn't know I was about to go into danger. Are we lost and in danger but don't know it? Where do we need to be like that air traffic control? Where do we need to be like air traffic control to the people around us and point out that they're stepping into danger? So what happens when we suddenly realise that we get lost? What happened in those stories? There was a turning around, there was a finding, and then there was a rejoicing. What does it mean to be found? In our parables this morning, we read that the shepherd finding the shepherd, the sheep, carried it back on his shoulders and brought it back to the flock, rejoicing. And the woman returns the coin to the other collection of coins, and there is rejoicing. That being found involves repentance. And repentance has a bad rap by many people. Repentance has a sound as if it's hard and heavy and, and, and difficult and painful. And yes, there can be some elements of that, because we have to give up some things that perhaps we quite enjoy. 
But repentance brings joy, brings life. It brings you back into the family of God. It is a joy, it is a gift, and it's a beautiful thing. And repentance is about simply saying sorry and then returning the other way. You've been going this way and you want to go that way. Saying sorry and turning around. And in that repentance, there's restoration and rejoicing. There's celebration. The shepherd rejoices, the woman rejoices, heaven rejoices with every sinner that says sorry. Jesus twice says there's rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents. There is meant to be rejoicing when we repent. Not mournful heavenness, but freedom and rejoicing. Restoring a relationship with God is such a wonderful and glorious thing. Sadly, it's just sometimes our pride or our fear of repentance that gets in the way. We'll take courage. We have a God who loves us. We have a God that sent his son to find us. He desires us. He delights us. He wants us. And all we have to do is say sorry and return to him. In one of the letters John wrote, if you confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and draws us back into the family of God. Many of us, again, if you're involved in the Mission Shaped Living course, we've been encouraging each other to pray for five, to pray for five people that, we, uh, that don't yet know the Lord. We're praying that they will repent. We're praying that they will be found and will know life afresh and full. So Jesus is the God of the lost. He's out there actively looking for us. The good news is that we have a loving father who sent his son Jesus to look for the lost. God is chasing after us and wants to bring us home. He wants us to turn back to him through repentance and rejoicing. That's the consequence. Consequence of being lost but then being found is rejoicing and celebration. And in a moment we are going to celebrate and rejoice after a confession. Can I invite you to stand?